Hi, Lee Phillips here. I want to talk to you for a minute about the taxation of repairs versus improvements. When you're doing real estate stuff, you're going to have new things go into the house, you're going to build a deck on it, you're going to do whatever. The question is, is that a repair or an improvement? Now tax-wise, you get to write off the repairs right now. Improvements, you have to actually start a new depreciation schedule over the class life of that thing. Uh, you know, the refrigerator has, I think, a five-year class life. So you're going to depreciate it over the five years. You don't want to do that. You want the deduction right now. You want to be able to take that off your taxes this year. Well, it's not a repair because even, even if your refrigerator was broken and you had to buy a new one, that's still not going to be considered a repair. Uh, <coughs> you know, and, and it becomes snaky as to whether or not it's a repair or an improvement. If I put new double pane glass windows in the unit, that's an improvement. If somebody throws a ball through the window and I replace the window, even if it's a single pane, if I replace it with a double pane, then that's a replacement. So it gets a little snaky. The improvements, you have to add to the basis and then you depreciate them over the class life. The repairs you write off immediately. So how do we write off these improvements? Well, there are a couple of ways that you can do it. One, today, you can do bonus depreciation and this is in uh, 2022. Now, next year, it, bonus depreciation is going to be reduced. Trump put this into place and it says that you can write off 100% anything that has less than a 20-year class life. You can just take it, you can bonus depreciate it, you can write off the thing today. Now, if you sell a unit within a certain amount of time, you might have to recapture and do some stuff, but basically, you're going to write it off today. The other way that you can write things off, and by the way, uh, next year it goes down to you get to write off 80% of it, and then you have to depreciate the other 20. The year after that, you can write off 60% of it, and you have to depreciate the other 40%. So it's going to go down until it disappears. But the other way you can write it off is through what we call a de minimis rule. Now, the de minimis, de minimis, de minimis, de minimis rule says that if it's under $2,500, $2, then it's de minimis. We don't have to worry about it. We can just write it off. Now, actually, what it does is it converts it to a repair. So it doesn't affect your basis. So basically, under 2,500 bucks, by definition, it's a repair. We write it off. There are a couple of trickies to this, though. One, it's $2,500 per item. So if your contractor bills you for $30,000 for the deck, you've got to depreciate that. No questions asked. And you start a new depreciation schedule on your tax return. <coughs> and I've seen tax returns with 20 depreciation schedules going. So you write it off. Now, wait a minute. Uh, how could I get that so it was a de minimis? Well, de minimis says it is per item. So if your contractor were to bill you uh, $2,500 for the subdecking, uh, $1,800 for the railing, uh, $500 for the stair stringer, uh, $800 for the stair treads, then each one of those items would qualify as a de minimis deduction and you would be able to write it off. So it depends on how you get your bill from Home Depot. And you think, ah, I know what I'm going to do. What you do is you've got a You've got $5,000 in decking, so that's fine. You go down and you get $2,500 one day, and you go down next week and you get another $2,500. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. They're going to consider that one item. But the stair stringers and the stair treads and the railing, those are all different items. So when you get them at Home Depot 
or when the contractor bills you, make sure that they are listed as separate items. Then you can take them off as de minimis repairs. And that's pretty cool, guys. Now, wait a minute. There's another catch. The other catch is, is you have to file every year if you're claiming a de minimis deduction repair. You have to file a paper, it's just a piece of paper, on the back of your tax return that says, we elect to file de minimis under code section blah, 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 blah. And I actually have one of those for you. If you want to call the office or click the button below or whatever you want to do, we can get you an example of the de minimis uh, language that you're going to use, what the IRS requires. The problem is your accountant's automatic computer forms, they don't generate that form. And I think that we've looked at hundreds of tax returns and we've only seen one or two of them that had this de minimis election on the back of it. If you don't have the de minimis, de minimum, that's a hard to say. If you don't have the de minimis election, you get audited, the IRS says, whoa, 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 time out. You don't get any deduction for this stuff. You get screwed. Oh, I mean, it doesn't work very well. So you have to file the election form on the back of your tax return. And like I say, just click and, and we'll get it to you, an example of it, it's, it's easy. You can do it. You've got to make sure that your accountant's doing it. And if he's not, you need to be attaching it. Accountants are not real estate dudes. They don't understand this stuff. They're very conservative people. They don't invest in real estate. And they don't go into the real estate rules like they really need to for you as a real estate investor. So don't forget to uh, like us and love us and, and subscribe and prescribe and do all the rest of that sort of stuff and get your language for the de minimis election. Lee Phillips, we'll talk to you next time.